Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from Carson City in the state capitol. On the program today, State Senator David Parks and Susan Fisher of McDonald Carano Wilson for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. 40 years ago, Hotel California and the theme from Rocky were number one on the pop charts, and DD Roofing and Sheet Metal started on the road to becoming Nevada's leading roofing company. I couldn't be more proud of what we've achieved. And over these 40 years, we've become an employee-owned company. So when you're talking to any employee, you're talking to an owner. And here's to the next 40 years. Happy 40th birthday, D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Nearly 200,000 Nevadans work in retail businesses, supporting families and the community. Nevada's retail businesses generated over $2 billion in sales tax revenue in one year including nearly $700 million to help our schools. Shop around and see all that Nevada's retailers offer our state. We're the Retail Association of Nevada, representing thousands of Nevada businesses. Businesses that work for Nevada. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from the state capitol in Carson City. We're in the old Supreme Court with State Senator David Parks. Pleasure to have you back on the program, Thank sir. Thank you. Glad to be here. And Susan Fisher, Government Affairs Group VP from McDonald Carano Wilson. Pleasure to have you here as well. Nice to be here, Sam. Before we get into more serious issues, I do want to talk about what happened with Mike Sprinkle last week. Um, another blow to the assembly. Um, what were your thoughts when you heard this news? Uh, I, I was just totally flabbergasted that, uh, uh, that this had come about and uh, uh, not knowing and you know, being in the Senate, uh, it's, it, you're, you're a country mile away from uh, anything going on in, uh, when you're in the Senate, uh, anything going on in the Assembly. So that, uh, that was uh, really a big surprise. Um, and he was so involved with, as it became to be known, sprinkle care. Mm -hmm. um, is there somebody sitting around who's going to be able to pick this up? Well, I think so. I know um, Assemblywoman Maggie Carlton has been very involved in the health care issues and the out-of-network issues, and that's something that Mr. Sprinkle had worked a lot on through the interim, and we've been meeting weekly um, groups with the, the providers, the doctors, the payers, insurance companies, and then also the hospitals to, to work on the out-of-network issues and try to find some common ground. Um, Assemblywoman Ellen Spiegel has been very involved in these as well, and she's um, um, got a good mind on this, and, and I'm hoping that she will be tapped to, to see this forward to make sure that we get something on the books. Um, were you surprised um, at uh, Kelvin Atkinson's resignation? I was extremely uh, surprised. It, uh, uh, it caught me as uh, unbelievable. So. I mean, and, and according to uh, Tom Roberts, the assemblyman, uh, who was formerly with Metro, this investigation would be going on for well over a year before they turned it over to the FBI. Um, and, and yet, uh, some people seem to have been a little aware of this, but others not. You know, I don't know that there was anybody in our uh, uh, caucus who uh, was aware or was made aware of it. So, it, you know, the fact that uh, reports have indicated that uh, more than a year uh, uh, that there's some, been something out there, uh, none of us uh, were aware. Um, with the speech that came out afterward, mm -hmm. um, with the apology, et cetera, 
what struck me was, why would you take that leadership position when you knew that you were un gonna be under indictment? Yeah, I wondered the same thing. I think that mm -hmm. was very unfair to do to his caucus. Mm -hmm. um, I can't imagine why that was done that way. Um, and that was a very well-crafted speech, resignation speech, obviously crafted by his attorneys and probably with um, some input from the, the investigators um, as part of the deal, saying admitting the guilt there in, in a public setting. But I think that that was a very unfortunate thing to do to the people who put their trust in him. Um, are you comfortable with Senator Canizzaro? She's, she's doing a fantastic job, and she's, mm -hmm. uh, she was a, you know, a great support to uh, uh, Senator Atkinson uh, as the uh, assistant majority uh, leader, and so uh, she stepped right up, and, uh, uh, and I also have to give credit to uh, uh, Senator Julia Reddy, who uh, is now the assistant uh, uh, majority leader, and between uh, uh, Senator Canizzaro and Senator Ratty. I think they're a fabulous team. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back and we have some issues that we need to talk about. We'll okay. be right back. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with extreme manufacturing and snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from Carson City, we continue our conversation with State Senator David Parks and Susan Fisher of McDonald Carano Wilson. Um, so one of the issues that you and I have been discussing for the last several sessions is this death with dignity bill. Yes. Um, we had the opposition on a couple of weeks ago. Um, and one of the things that they brought up uh, was uh, the claim that insurance companies are gonna take the easy way out and offer um, a pill for somebody to commit suicide rather than private, uh, providing for medical care. Uh, do you believe that to be something that is actually a fact? Um. I don't believe that it is, and I think the evidence uh, to prove it is the fact that uh, there, if you add all the states that have uh, implemented a death with dignity bill, that uh, it adds up to somewhere in the range of 40 years of experience, and in 40 years of experience, that has not been the case. We have heard uh, rumors and uh, individuals who have made uh, assertions that, uh, that that is the case, but. Uh, there's been never been an investigation that has proven that that is uh, what's happened. Do you believe that this, the opposition is more based on religious grounds, even though that's denied? Uh, I think I think that it is uh, uh, quite uh, strongly uh, uh, based on religious grounds, uh, and uh, we've certainly you know, seen it with uh, even some of the, our testimony and, and discussions with our 
uh, our colleagues. And, and it's certainly fair for people to have religious That's beliefs. Right. Um, I just think mm -hmm. personally in this particular case that the rights of the individual should be respected uh, beyond. Right, and, and it's strictly voluntary, so uh, if it's something you don't want to do, then, uh, then there's nothing uh, forcing you to do it. Um, Susan, you had some pretty strong opinions about the idea mm -hmm. that uh, um, insurance companies were, were going beyond the pale with this. Yeah, I just don't believe that at all. I don't believe that that's happened. And I think that the, those who have claimed that insurance companies have said that to them have been dishonest, and which is actually a penalty if you, if you uh, state something on the record at the legislature that is knowingly not true. Mm -hmm. As far as religious beliefs, you know, when it's a, for some people it's just black and white, and that's okay. But the polling here in Nevada shows that about 76% of Nevadans support this. Over 70% of Catholics polled actually support this. Um, I don't know where the Mormon church lies on this now. In the past, they have been opposed. They've softened their opposition some. We do see with, with those um, fellow legislators who are, are very devout Mormon that um, they have been opposed to this. You know, and, and that's okay. Everybody has to have their own opinion on this. But as Senator Park said, no one is going to force anyone to do this. They have a free choice. It's our last civil right. At the end of the game, when there are no other options whatsoever and you're faced with this catastrophic disease that's gonna kill you in a very short period of time, it's your last civil right. Um, and, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that this is, you know, a, another situation where we shouldn't be telling people what they should be doing with their own bodies. Um, we've gotten past this uh, to a certain extent with abortion. Whether I believe in abortion or not, it is not my business of what a woman does with her body. And frankly, what I choose to do with my body at the end of my life is my decision, not anybody else's. That's correct, yeah, and I, and I strongly support that. Um, so at, at this point in time, obviously, this is always the most important thing at a session, which is counting the votes. Where do you feel you're sitting at this point? Well, the, the vote is, uh, the bill is currently in Health and Human Services uh, Committee in the Senate. Uh, it is a five member body, uh, and uh, I believe that I have the majority uh, to get the, uh, the bill out of uh, uh, committee, and then it would obviously would go to, uh, it, it requires a small amendment, uh, but uh, it would go to the floor of the Senate uh, uh, for a vote. And, and all indications are that uh, uh, I have sufficient uh, uh, votes in support of it. Okay, so so can you share what, what the amendment would be? Uh, well, the amendment uh, deals with uh, two issues. Uh, uh, one deals with uh, the uh, uh, the coroner's office and uh, uh, a uh, the death uh, certificate, and the second one deals with telemedicine. And I think uh, uh, Susan would uh, probably mm -hmm. have a little. Uh, a better grasp on that since uh, uh, she had uh, dealt with it. Yes, um, the, in Nevada we have on statute on the books telemedicine, telehealth, so that if you're living in a rural area or you can't get to your doctor, you can communicate with your doctor um, via the computer, Skyping, FaceTime, however, um, and they can examine you to some degree and they can give you your reports and they can prescribe for you online that way. Um, there was some concern about using telehealth for diagnosing and prescribing this. And we agreed that um, at least to start now, we're gonna take that out of the bill. It wasn't that it had been put in, it's just under Nevada statute, it's automatically in. If you're practicing medicine, you can do telehealth. And we took that out. It hasn't been an issue in other states. They have used it in other states, but just to avoid any opposition that that would bring, we decided to take it out. The Nevada State Medical Association had said, we would rather that not be in there, and so we took it out. With regard to the, the coroner's amendment, that um, in Clark County, the coroner has to investigate any death that occurs outside of a hospital setting. Um, and they didn't want to have 
family members having to wait on an autopsy on these patients and have them sitting in the cooler for a week. You know, that's just not right under a situation like this. And so we worked with the Clark County coroner and um, came to some compromise language so that um, the, uh, the attending physician in these instances will actually be the prescribing physician. Okay, and, and how, how does law enforcement feel about this? Have you gotten um, positive, negative, neutral from law enforcement? I, I'd have to say that uh, neutral is probably the best. They, they have not, uh, other than having uh, input from the coroner's office, uh, uh, we have not uh, in uh, previous sessions or this session had uh, the uh, law enforcement uh, come forward and uh, uh, make a uh, uh, recommendation or uh, voice its uh, support or opposition. Do you have the votes in the assembly? Um, I'm, w I'm certainly working on that, and it seems that, uh, yeah, I, w I, I was pretty confident that we had the votes two years ago, but unfortunately uh, it got to the end of the session uh, when things go uh, off the rails, so to speak. And uh, uh, I think that uh, I probably would have uh, been able to get it passed uh, two years ago uh, had I had just a little more time. Unfortunately, we had a, uh, a hearing in the Assembly Health and Human Services Committee, and four of my uh, uh, key uh, uh, individuals testifying in support uh, were on uh, Memorial Day weekend break. So. Um, have you talked to the governor about it? Uh, I have not. Uh, the indication that I have received and seen has been that uh, uh, the governor is waiting to see what the bill is when it comes to his desk, and that's a pretty standard uh, uh, position that uh, most governors take. And, and an appropriate one. Okay, let's mm -hmm. take a break. We have other topics to get to, and we'll be right back. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids. But they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator David Parks and Susan Fisher. I want to get to a couple of other issues here. Sure, um, one is one that's popped up recently uh, in a lawsuit uh, regarding a Batajarino Industrial Center owner and a uh, reporter slash blogger, we're not really sure what the definition is, um, that, that is opening up the topic of the shield law, the Nevada shield right, law. Right. And so my question to you is, in looking at this, um, you know, the, the district court judge has ruled in, in favor of the plaintiff. Um, do you think that we need to open up the, open, uh, the, or the, uh, the shield law 
to cover people who write electronically that wasn't covered when this was first passed years ago? Well, I, 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 I was rather surprised to see that you had to have a membership in the Press Association in order to be covered by the Shield Law. And by the way, I have never been a member of the Press <laughs> it Association. It seems like sort of so. mandatory <laughs> union yeah, member, exactly. right? Yeah. Well, and, and <laughs> the feeling is uh -huh. that that was meant to cover like the Associated Press mm -hmm. and uh, United Press right. International yeah. when that existed, mm -hmm. rather than the State Press Association, which is right. a trade group. Exactly. Um, now, uh, to answer your question, I think that uh, we do need to open it up. And I think that there, there needs to be an amendment that uh, more clearly clarifies you know, who would be uh, uh, eligible for uh, taking advantage of the shield law. And, and I will say right here that I don't consider myself a journalist. I consider myself a, a talk show host. And I interview people, and we have conversations. Um, but I have always been covered by, uh, to my knowledge, the shield law, exactly. with the, the various uh, entities that I've worked with. Um, but uh, it just seems to me a little ridiculous. Did you want to jump in on the No, end of this? I, I agree with that. It does seem a little bit really ridiculous to me. Um, you know, any blogger out there, no, they don't, they wouldn't get the same protections, but um, a legitimate news source, even if it's only online, I think should, should be offered some protections. And should they have to be part of the, the association? I don't, I don't know. I guess that's up for you guys, You know, there's to no definition. If you look in the yeah. dictionary under journalist, right. mm -hmm. there is no professional affiliation. You don't have to have gone to school. Uh, it's like any other trade that you may have learned from the ground up. Um, there is no accreditation that says, you're a journalist, you're not. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say, I don't consider myself to be one, mm -hmm. but um, I would still enjoy the protections. And uh, there are certainly people that call me privately and give me suggestions and information. and. Well, I'm going to be wearing that candy striped shirt if, uh, and you if necessary. Them. You've got mm -hmm. to. Um, right. One of your big issues in this session, we just came through Sunshine Week, yes. uh, which is transparency. Right. What, what are you looking at trying to accomplish in this session with transparency? Well, um, we have a public records law, and this uh, bill uh, will, uh, it's uh, Senate Bill 287, and it will uh, amend uh, the current uh, uh, public records law. It's been a concerted effort by a really wide group of individuals, probably more than a dozen individuals have uh, put input into it. Uh, and uh, what it's trying to do is to get away from all these lengthy lawsuits that uh, uh, cost uh, uh, governments uh, a lot of money in, uh, uh, in trying to uh, defend their uh, failure to um, provide uh, documentation. And it's always tough. And, and you know, we want to look at it more from also from an electronic perspective. Uh, we can uh, certainly uh, save effort and money on the part of whoever is having to provide that documentation uh, by providing it electronically. So I think we're, we're going to have a really uh, heated discussion, I'm sure. Uh, but hopefully, at the end of the session, we'll have uh, a law that uh, uh, will uh, uh, better uh, address the issues uh, uh, that we, we face on an ongoing basis. Do you have concerns, for example, that there's been an ongoing battle between the Las Vegas Review Journal and their attorney and uh, uh, Las Vegas Metro um, amongst you know, the many cases that they file? Right. Um, do, do you think that uh, there, there should be more uh, information released and in a quicker fashion than? Is well, being and, and, back. and uh, I, I, I tend to think that yes, that should be the case. And as a result of uh, lawsuits that uh, have been settled, we've certainly seen that uh, uh, the uh, uh, members of the media have uh, uh, prevailed in, in their uh, uh, quest for uh, a uh, resolution in the courts. And a sidebar to this, of course, would be the whole PERS discussion about revealing the names of people and how much money that uh, they're getting from PERS. Um, do you have a problem with, with that? I mean, and, and they're, I, I, they're making it very clear that they're not asking for social security numbers, not asking for personal addresses, but that somebody who had earned their living from the government, mm -hmm. um, paid for by the public, um, we should be able to know how much that they're receiving in retirement. Well, I, I certainly have a problem uh, when it comes to the fact that someone uh, can uh, uh, access this information and then turn around and pursue somebody uh, 
especially somebody who may be uh, retired in their 80s and, uh, uh, and uh, can uh, uh, pursue that. I also have a problem uh, as far as public records. I, uh, I think uh, uh, that uh, autopsy reports uh, uh, ought not to uh, be uh, uh, fully uh, available uh, to whoever might be uh, looking for them. And I, I think we have to also deal with, you know, what is the limit of redaction for a uh, particular uh, uh, public document? Um, so obviously there's going to be a lot more battles in this legislative oh, yes. session over this topic. Yes. Do, mm -hmm. do you want to add to this? You know, I, I agree with Senator Parks on this um, as far as having some concerns on it. The rank and file employee in the state, they shouldn't be, their records shouldn't be open to the public like that. If it's an appointed, if it's the, the head of a department of business and industry or a division, um, you know, some other division head that is appointed by the governor, that's a little bit different. You may want to see if, has the governor appointed a friend of his and what's that, what's that appointee being paid? Um, but rank and file, no. That's where we've got to leave it. Please come back before the end of okay, session. It's always a pleasure to have you Thank here. You. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Sam. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye catches its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culp of Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada is a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to marilynminer.com. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance, custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. On our next broadcast, it's an all-pundit show with Russell Rowe, Mary Lau, and Elisa Caparato. We'll see you then.